What's going on, everybody? This is the Growing Up Italian Podcast. And today's podcast, we're trying something a little different, not something you're used to seeing. I'm your host today, Rocco Loguercio, and I'll be taking you guys through the most popular asked questions to growing up Italian. Let's do it. So we're always about giving back, and that is exactly what we're going to be doing today. A lot of you guys have frequently asked questions that we kind of don't always get to in the DMs. But today we're using this episode to touch on all those questions so you guys can have a better idea on how Italians are and how we are as growing up Italian and all that good stuff. So let's do it. Now, the very first question that almost every single Italian gets, including ourselves, obviously, no matter where you are, you could, be, you could be in America, you can be in Italy, you could be in Australia, you could be in Canada, you can be in South America. Anywhere you are, when somebody asks you something, they're going to always resort to the number one question, and that is, do you call it sauce or gravy? And to answer that, on behalf of Sabino and Migala, who are the other two partners in Growing Up Italian with me, we call it sauce. So our whole lives, we called it sauce. It's always been sauce to us. Gravy was known as what we serve on Thanksgiving on top of the mashed potatoes or on top of the turkey. That is what we have. That is what we think of gravy as brown. Uh, we think of sauce as red. Uh, any kind of sauce. The bolognese is always going to be called sauce. Not just because there's meat in it, you consider it gravy. Now, it was always sauce for us. Do we judge people for calling it gravy? No, you can call what you call it. As long as it tastes good, that's all that really matters to us. Moving on to number two, uh, what is your favorite place to visit in Italy? Uh, for me, I'm speaking on behalf of myself, my favorite place that I visited in Italy was Rome. Now, Rome is absolutely breathtaking and beautiful. I'm somebody who appreciates architecture, who appreciates historical uh, presence and value. And obviously, uh, we come from the Roman Empire and the ancient Romans. They set the foundation for us. Uh, they built beautiful Roman architecture, and to see that still to this day uh, was absolutely amazing. I have visited many, many places in Italy, but Rome was by far my favorite. Uh, I'll even insert a couple of pictures of my trip there. It, it was a lot of fun. Uh, my favorite, quite personally, was the Pantheon. Uh, I just appreciated the... Really, the the outside was was beautiful, but the inside was even even nicer. It's kind of like the Sistine Chapel, very, very breathtaking, and obviously holds a lot of historical value as well. Uh, numero tres, or numero, numero tre, uh, where are you from? Where are we from? So growing up Italian, where are we from? We are from Williamsburg, Brooklyn, New York. So I know a lot of you are like, whoa, you guys are growing up Italian. How are you not from Italy? Well, our parents come from Italy. They come from small towns in Salerno. My parents both come from the town called Sassano. It's got a population size of about 2,000 people. Yes, a whopping 2,000 people. You heard that correctly. Damn! All right. And the, the hometown of Sabino and Michaela's father is called Sanza. And I think they have an even smaller population size gotta look it up to be more specific but the towns it's themselves are about 30 minutes apart maybe less 25 minutes unless you come across some sheep and cattle on the way in the road because yes we are from the south and there is a lot of livestock and animals always roaming around just in case you were wondering Bruh. okay Number four, uh, when did we start the page? When did we start growing up a time? I remember the exact day. It was February 2nd of 2016. So that's a little under five years ago. We started this dream on Instagram. It was originally just me and Miguela. And we come up with this page called Growing Up a Time. We posted memes. We were, we're just trying to be relatable to everybody and trying to push the culture forward because we realized it was kind of like a dying breed. A lot of people from our neighborhood in Brooklyn were moving out. And we kind of felt that attachment to the Italian culture fading. So we want to preserve it as best as possible. And that's why we made the page. And honestly, we kept doing it as often as we could. Originally, it started like a post a week. And now it's like five posts a day. Not even kidding. So we're going to keep doing that. 
Uh, we love it with a passion. It started as a passion, and now, I mean, it started as a hobby, and now it became a passion, and it's a literal movement. We have a great team and a support system around us. We have a lot of young TikTokers and a beautiful team of uh, uh, editors and producers and all that good stuff helping us create this amazing content. And yeah, couldn't wouldn't have it any other way. You know, the sky's the limit, and that's how we think every single day. Number five, events. So. This one was, oof, events. Hmm, let's see, let's see. So we had a bunch of events in the past, a bunch, but due to COVID, we had to delay everything we had in mind and put it to a halt for now. A lot planned, a lot planned, trust me. So if you loved us before quarantine, you're going to love us even more, especially because we have so many more followers and we could do so much more things than we can ever have imagined but yeah, what we did before quarantine, we actually hosted the first Italian Heritage Day at City Field in like a decade. So they didn't have an Italian Heritage Day at City Field for 10 years. We brought it back. So that was pretty, that was an awesome experience. Uh, one of my favorite events that we hosted was a Scopa tournament. Now, this is when we were still building. We didn't know uh, how many people were going to show up. We had 35 teams of two, including myself and Sabino, trying to hold it down for Team Grown Up Italian. We didn't really do that well, but hey, it is what it is. But the turnout was absolutely amazing. You can actually watch that video. It's on our YouTube channel just by searching Grown Up Italian Scopa Tournament. It was a great success, had a lot of fun. A lot of amazing people showed out, and we could only imagine what the future is going to hold the next time we do a Scopa Tournament, which I am dying to do. Just we got to wait and be patient. Uh, a lot more events planned. We had some comedy nights. We, we've been to a couple events where we've done comedy. In the future, I don't want to spoil too much, but you can expect some of the same and more. And then when I say and more, I don't want to release it just yet. You guys will find out, and hopefully you guys get first dibs on what we're doing. Uh, now, before I get to the Instagram submissions that you guys sent replying to my story, I posted a story asking you guys to send in some questions for us, which we'll go over. And I have a whole bunch here that I'm going to put. Uh, before we do that, I want to give one last question that is probably the most valuable question that we could respond to for any page that is smaller than us or not even Italian affiliated or related. They just want advice on how to do well within this social media monster and how to succeed. Uh, so advice to smaller pages, my advice to you is, or smaller individuals who are trying to become public figures and ambassadors or, you know, entrepreneurs, you know, all that good stuff. My advice to you, honestly, first and foremost, find out what you're passionate in. That's the number one thing. Okay. If you find out where you're passionate in, you have to believe in yourself before you have to think about anybody else's opinion. You have to believe in yourself that you will get far and you will do everything it takes in between to get that far. Now, along the way, meet and network with as many people as possible, but don't burn those bridges, okay? Uh, always be nice to people. Always consider them and what you do in the future. Just because you come big in the future doesn't mean you should forget about them when you were small because those are the people that are supporting you from day one and you always want to pay respect to them and appreciate them for giving you that help that you needed. Uh, that's, that's my most important thing. Find what you're passionate in, find what you believe in and believe in yourself to fully fulfill that dream. Now you have to also love what you're doing. You can't look at it every day as if it's a chore, because if it's a chore, then clearly it's not fun for you at that point, And you're just doing it, uh, for something that's not out of love. It's probably out of, uh, trying to make more money or something. And at the end of the day, that's really not going to help you succeed and build your brand or whatever or build whatever you're trying to do so if you're not doing it for the love of it then it's a bad start already i hate to break it to you guys it's probably best to not take that approach especially when the world revolves around it just focus on doing something you love my third is use social media as much as possible now what i say by that is if you have an instagram platform make sure you're doing it facebook twitter tiktok especially now all that good stuff, you want to be involved and aware of what's going on in those uh, social media pages and how you can incorporate your brand or yourself into that social media outlet and just doing stuff that you enjoy for people because some people might like what you're doing 
on Instagram, but not like it on TikTok or vice versa. You know what I mean? So find, find your niche and then just go with it. If people like it, stick with it. If people don't like it, then try something else. Find that niche, have fun with it, and you really enjoy it. And the last advice I could give to smaller pages is to probably never give up, okay? A lot of times it's going to seem like you're failing more than you're succeeding. The posts that you think are going to do well don't do well at all. You have to believe in yourself, and you can never give up, no matter how hard things may be. If you truly enjoy something, find the time for it. Find that hour a day. Whatever it may be, put out that content. Hope for the best. It will get recognized. The number one thing I tell people is good content will always get recognized. So if you know you have good content, keep doing it. I promise it's worth it. All right. Oof. Oh, yeah. I'm dropping bars right now. So now let me get to the actual uh, messages that you guys asked for uh, that I have right over here saved up. And I will put it in the video. Like I said, I promised I would feature you guys. So we're going to put it somewhere over here. Not sure yet, but here we go. Okay. Laura Caboni underscore said, that's not a question, but siete fantastici e dovreste parlare più spesso in italiano. Well, Laura, grazie mille, la prima cosa, which means thank you for those who don't speak Italian. Uh, so Laura, that's not even, not even a question, but she said how we are amazing and she would love for us to speak more Italian. Now, uh, we are Italian-American, so we're first-generation Italian-American, like I said. The reason we don't speak so much Italian is because most of our followers are not uh, Italian. I'm, I'm sorry, not from Italy. So what that means is, obviously, if you don't speak Italian, you're not going to understand. You're going to attract a smaller crowd. We can speak it. We don't speak it as much as we do on the page because then a lot of people can't relate to it. You want to be relatable to most of the people that we have. And, you know, we know our crowd. So we're going to, not we're going to cater to them, but we want to make sure that most of our followers can understand this via English. And obviously there's times that we speak Italian and hopefully uh, most of our followers can comprehend that as well. And if not, we'll report, we'll, um, we'll post like a caption explaining what's going on in English and whatnot. But on the stories, we are speaking Italian most of the time. So, parliamo sempre italiana nella nostra storia e perdonami se la dialette salernitana fa schifo e proprio... Okay, Lexi underscore Morelli says, how do I get myself to be a part of this? I'm a pure red too. Woo. So, Lexi, um, we are always looking for people to work with us. Like, like we said in our recap 13, I believe it was, we have literally built the brand now. Like, we have this beautiful sign here. This is considered the Italian house. It's literally a dream come true. We got so much more planned in the future, but we're always willing to work with people. If you got great content, DM us the content. If you want to work with us, rock our merch, become an ambassador, please hit us up. We're always looking and eager to meet new people and uh, work with new people. So by all means, Lexi, let us know. The next one, the next question is from Gabby underscore Catherine, underscore Catherine 25. Did you grow up speaking Italian? Or did you learn it when you got older? So I personally lived with my nonna my whole life. So meaning my father, when he married my mom, lived uh, in the same house as my nonna. So the only way I could communicate with my nonna is if I spoke English. I mean, no, I'm sorry. The only way that I could communicate with my nonna was if I spoke in Italian. There was no shot that she would know what I was saying if I was speaking English. My parents came from Italy, so obviously they spoke mostly Italian as well. So Italian was literally in my household. Italian was my first language, if that answers your question, Gabby. Uh, I came out of the womb speaking Italian. I came out of the womb with a mustache. No, I'm just kidding. But yeah, Italian first, then English. And that's probably why I stutter sometimes when I speak and kind of have speech impediments, I guess you can say, right? If you pay attention to this episode closely, pay attention to how I speak for the rest of the video. You'll catch like the little things I do that are not quite perfect. GDEA03 says, favorite Serie A teams. Okay, I'm going to start with myself. I like it, Kaji. It's Juventus, okay? My family in Italy are all Juventino. They've been Juventino since the day I was born. And I, my favorite player of all time is Alessandro Del Piero, followed by Gianluigi Buffon. Those are two staples for the Juventus club. And honestly, I wouldn't want it any other way. We won nine straight Scudetto. And it's something that I am very, very happy to be a Juventus fan. 
Obviously, not a front run, front runner. I've been a fan my whole life. Anybody who knows me knows I've been a fan. But yeah, I guess on to the other teams if we have to. Sabino and Migala are Interista or Inter fans. <laughs> which, uh, yeah. Next question. <laughs> Mateo Canu 04 says, How's your homemade sauce and meatballs and pasta? So, my homemade sauce and meatballs and pasta. Uh, you're going to have to ask my fiance, Taylor, how I make my homemade sauce and whatnot. But uh, I'm trying to get some recipes from my mother and my nonna, but they said when I move out, that's finally when I'll be able to get that recipe. But for now, I think it's pretty good. Honestly, it's not like theirs, but it, you know, it needs a little couple tweaks, maybe a little more of this, a little more of that, a little more Parmesan in the breadcrumbs, a little, you know, whatever the hell you want to put in there. Everybody makes it different, but that's what makes our sauce so good. Like everybody, you go to any Italian and like, nah, I got the best sauce. Like, no, I got the best sauce. It becomes a whole thing. And then you got the one person who's like, what are you talking about sauce? I thought it was gravy. So then, then that gets thrown in there. But to each their own, I'm still learning, but I think it's pretty damn good. Uh, and he also, that same person asked, what is your favorite pasta? My personal favorite pasta is cavatelli. So cavatelli comes from, it's a very popular southern dish. It's homemade pasta, kind of, uh, I want to say shaped like, like half your pinky size. And it's really, really delicious. Homemade. It's got to be with sauce. Nothing else but sauce. Could use some brajol in there if you want. Uh, uh, ground meat and whatnot. But it's really good alone just with sauce. And some parmigiano reggiano or ricotta on top. Whatever you want to put on there. Uh, the Grandmaster of Swag says, How are you? Aww. Wow. That is honestly, Grandmaster of Swag, thank you. Thank you for asking about me personally. How am I? I'm great. How are you? Hope you're doing good. All right, next question. Lydia underscore piano 02. What's scarier, an angry nonna or an angry nonno? Ooh, okay. First instinct when I'm thinking of angry nonno is a nonno snapping his belt and giving you a little... And then when I think of angry nonna, I'm thinking like maybe Uganil, the slipper, the wooden spoon, the whatever she's holding in her hand. And I think it's got to be angry nonna because you don't know what's going to be in her hand at any given moment and you will get beat down by it. So, yeah, I think angry nonna is the 100 percent the answer. Uh, new Theory Mag says, what's a new school Italian trend versus an old school Italian trend? So I'm going to give you an old school Italian trend that I guess it applies for Italian American as well. But a new school, I'm sorry, an old school Italian trend, I think, was people hanging out in bars, in social clubs, things like that, playing cards, playing bocce. That to me is an old school Italian trend. I, I picture old Italian men hanging out at a bar, uh, playing scopa, brisco, zette bell, azetando, whatever they're playing, they're doing all that. Playing Mora, Jinga, Jinga, Zay, Zay, where they throw out there the numbers, trying to guess what the two people combined to make. If you don't know how to play Mora, look up YouTube uh, videos on YouTube. It's really informative and it's a pretty cool game. But yeah, that's definitely an old school trend. A new school Italian trend, I feel like in Italy for sure, it's the feast and the parties that these kids are going to. So when I go to Italy, my cousins are like rarely ever home. They're always going out to Azagra or Avestri, whatever, or going to mountains and partying and having a good time. So they do it a little different than we do here in New York. But there's basically like a feast for everything in Italy. For every saint, there's a feast. And then there's Sagras, which is basically uh, another feast, but another reason to eat. They have an insane amount of food. So I think that's the, the new Italian trend or the newer. But, you know, I could be wrong. For somebody who lives in Italy, you can put me wrong. But, uh, yeah, hopefully that answers your question. Difference between north of Italy and the south. Uh, and this will be the last question. Now, difference between northern Italy and the south. Economically, huge difference. Like, you cannot compare Salerno, which is uh, a southern region where we come from, which is close to uh, Napoli and Bari. It's, like, around the Campania region or in the Campania region. 
you cannot compare Salerno to Milan. There, I've been to both, obviously, and Milan is like this city. It's beautiful over there. And not to say that Salerno is not beautiful because we have the Amalfi Coast in Salerno, we have Positano. It's beautiful, don't get me wrong. Much more country in the southern, much more fields, lands, empty space, a lot of deserted towns, and that often leads to a bad economy and people moving out to find more jobs. So economically, huge gap, Milan, city, fashion, anything you name it, Milan's got it. Meanwhile, Salerno, they're like years behind the technology as well. Now, I'm not basing it all off of all of southern Italy, but most of it is like Salerno for a fact. So now let's talk about cuisines. Um, so southern Italian cuisines and northern Italian cuisines are different. There are some similarities, but they are very different. Now, northern Italy uses a lot more butter and creams versus southern Italy. They use a lot more tomatoes and olive oil and i think that that is because we are rich in olive oil in the southern um part of italy which is, is a great thing both have their benefits so northern italy is famous for foods like polenta mascarpone grana padano and parmigiano cheeses risotto lasagna and fresh egg pasta whereas southern italy has mozzarella cacciacavallo and pecorino cheeses olive oil and dried pasta so there's a lot more that i and missing out on from, from the northern and southern parts of Italy. But that is the main gist of it. Uh, hopefully we can get a chance to actually compare the two. And dissect it a little further in its own podcast episode. But yeah guys listen. That was basically all the questions. And all the ones that I feel are going to leave people like they learned something today. And hopefully you did. But if you have any other questions feel free to DM us. Uh, or have any other requests for podcast episodes. These are literally scratching the surface on so many different topics. But well, what I do want to leave you guys off with is if you did enjoy this video, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. We appreciate it. All those support helps us. And if you like our merch, I'm wearing Italian AF, which is Italian as <laughs> Which basically, uh, if you want to support, we have a bunch more merch online on our merchandise website, grownupitaliangui.com. You guys can check it out. Pick out the merch you like. We got more drops coming out, especially for Christmas. Stay tuned for that. It's going to be awesome. But yeah, we're going to keep doing what we're doing because we love you guys so much. We love doing this content. And thank you all for listening. So, state the bone and bonanot.